All right, good morning, AP Physics. It is September 29th as we speak, and hopefully you did what I asked you to and completed your chapter review ahead of time so that we can hurry through this. Otherwise, if you didn't, then you're going to be using the pause the whole time and completing the problems in the review so that you have yourself ready for your test. Uh, don't forget your couple motion lab is due tomorrow, and uh, that should also benefit you as far as your test goes. Um, now that nap, I think we're ready to get started. The two homework assignments that you were supposed to finish, chapter five, homework number seven and eight, 42 to 40, 40 to 42 and 43 to 47 or something like that. We'll see as we go. <clears throat> the first one, what is the acceleration of the system and what is the tension in the rope? So you're going to start by drawing yourself the free body diagrams like you're required to on your test. You have a FG1 and you have a FG10, ginormously long, so long that it goes off the page on the top here because of how badly a job I did of drawing it in there. It doesn't matter, it's not gonna go into the FNet equation. Um, on this side, we have a FT, and that same tension force is what pulls forward on the 10 kilogram mass. Now, I'm expecting not much acceleration because a one kilogram mass can't get 11 kilograms of mass moving very fast, right? A lot of inertia here, not a lot of force. So we write an FNet equation. It says FG1 minus FT plus FT total mass times acceleration equals 10, which means that A equals something around 0.9. Once we have that acceleration, then what we'll do in our second part of this problem is we'll single out a section of this and write an FNet equation based on that. FNet equals FG1 minus FT. Uh, total mass is only one kilogram this time, times the acceleration, hopefully the answer is 0.9, and then solve for FT. This would all make sense because right now if this becomes 9, 0.9. Wait a minute. Do -do -do. What am I messing up here? Bad divide here. Let's just go to the next slide. Oh, I don't have an answer slide, so I'm stuck with this one. I want a tension around 9. So... A equals 10 divided by 11, something around 0.9. Then 0.9 times 1 is 0.9. Oh, because then the tension force, when you subtract 10 minus 0.9, you get like 9.1 newtons. All right, my world's starting to come back together. I was thinking the answer was 0.9. I'm like, there's no way that tension force would be so small. It's got to be big because it's going gonna, it's gonna to barely be accelerating, which we can see from here. And don't forget that I do take off points if you don't include the units. All right, now my world feels better. Question number 41, uh, same thing. Uh, in fact, gosh, I hope that this question exactly as it is didn't end up on somebody's form of the test. Um, I know that all of the forms of the test are very similar to this, but it's possible that one form of the test is actually these exact same questions. So um, if so, did you get more benefit than other people? Not really. Come on, these are all the same. People still screw them up. Um, when you're doing them, though, with your notes in front of you, I better see 100% on all of these. Okay, so those are all the forces. Only the maroon ones get to go in the FNet equation. F, uh, let's start with FG. FNet equals FG3 minus FT1 plus FT1 minus FT2 plus FT2 minus FG1. None of the red ones go in there. Um, F net equals total mass, which is six times acceleration equals 30 minus 10. A equals 20 divided by six, which is 3.7 meters per second squared. Then we want to know what the tension is in each rope. So now I'm going to single out sections here and here. In this side, we're going to put F net equals FG3 minus FT1. Total mass is three kilograms, not six, times 3.7 equals 30 minus FT1. FT1 comes out to be basically, what is that, about 11? So we're going to look at maybe about 19 newtons. I'm not getting on a calculator because I'm hurrying. Right here on this side, we're going to say that F net equals, now I'm putting them backward because since it's moving upward, T2 is beating G1. So total mass, one kilogram times 3.7 equals FT2 minus 10. 
add 10, we get that FT2 equals 13.7. My answer is no, equals three points. Yes, equals 13.7. My answers may not be exact, but at least I can say this about them. 30 is bigger than 19, 19 is bigger than 14, and 14 is bigger than 10. If it's that close, I mean, on a test, do you really think I'm going to take off points if you didn't use your calculator to get it that quick like I just did? But you have a calculator for you. Question number 42. Oh, we have something like this on our test. One of the questions I leave one of the masters as an unknown and do it backward. How about if we solve for the unknown there? What is the value of it? Well, let's still be Zen with our forces. This is still FG10. Over here, this is FGM. I'm going to keep the same color just so I don't have to keep switching between colors. FG5 and FN. And then we have a tension force upward, FT, that same tension force, T1 is this force here. Then we have a FT2, a little bit less than FT1. And of course, on the test, you want to be very careful to make sure that all of these things kind of fit the scale. I'll be looking. I'm not going to go crazy, but I will be looking. F net equals a 10 gram mass. Now, if you want to, you can just pretend all of these are kilograms just to make the dealing with the numbers easier. We can adjust back the gram for the final answer. 10 grams, we'll call it is 10 kilograms. We'll call that 100. I suppose I should write the F net equation. Since you have to do this on your test the whole way through, you might as well practice it now too. FT1 plus FT1 minus FT2 plus FT2 and then minus FGM. This mass here in the center does not get to go in the F net equation. It contributes to total inertia, to total mass. So when we say 15 plus M is our total mass, I don't know what M is, so I got to leave it as M times A. Oh, and we know A. We know that A is 1.5 meters per second squared equals. Now I'm going to just pretend since I left this as 15, like 15 kilograms, I can make this be 100 newtons and then minus uh, M times G. And that's solvable right there. That's just going to take some algebra and some rearranging until you get to what the M is. Be prepared that you have something kind of similar to this on the test. I think it's a little easier than this one but it will have m's that show up both as a force, part of m times g, and as a mass, part of the, the total mass in the f net portion. Be ready for that. Question 43 to 45, we are now dealing with inclined planes. They get harder, don't worry, coupled motion inclined planes. So to begin with in this one here was not harder. We start by drawing the fg, the fn, that's supposed to be perfectly perpendicular to the surface. I'm writing on something that sometimes is difficult. And on your test, when I ask you to draw the F, the uh, free body diagram for the mass on the incline, that's all you have to put, right? If you want to break up FG into its two components, FG parallel and FG perpendicular, I'm okay with that. I put it right on the test that says that you can do that if you want to. If you put those instead of putting FG, I'm okay with that. Um, so there's a lot of leeway here. Then what's the acceleration is the unbalanced force of FG parallel. Mass times acceleration equals mass times gravity times sine theta, which means that the mass of the block doesn't even matter. A equals 10 times sine of 10 degrees. Plug in and solve. My calculator did not have a problem answered here, but you can handle it from there, can't you? It's going to be small. It makes sense. 10 degree incline isn't very much. And I think on your test, you do have a problem where I think I had like the, the angles 5, 8, 10, 12, and 15. No, there's six versions of the test. So, you know, maybe between 5 and 20 altogether. And, you know, basically that's all you're doing. Question number 44. Now we're dealing with coupled motion and also incline planes. So, if you had to draw the free body diagram, you could say FG1 and FG2, and we have a normal force. We have a tension force, and we have a tension force, and that would all be that's necessary on your free body diagram. If you decide to break up FG into its two components, FG perpendicular and FG parallel, that's absolutely fine. I won't have a problem with that. Then we make an F net equation. The F net equation says F net equals F G parallel minus F T plus F T minus F G two F net total mass, which is 14 
times a equals uh, 10 times 10 mg sine theta would be 100 times sine of 30 degrees minus uh, 4 kilograms is 40 newtons. Sine of 30 is 0.5, so that makes this a 50. 50 minus 40 is 10, which means we have 14 times A equals 10, which means A equals 10 over 14. Now we want to find the tension. You could use either of the two masses. I think the easier one to find the tension on is the one in back because it does the same thing as what we had on the flat tables. So for that one, we would say F net equals FT minus FG2. Total mass, which is 4 times 10 over 14 equals FT minus 40. So you're going to add 40 to 40 over 14, and you can tell me what your calculator gets for that. Um, I'm not going to say anything more about what you do on your test. If you didn't use your calculator and you left it as just a big, complicated expression, I'd probably still give you full credit. As long as everything was right, I should be able to tell. Number 45 to finish off this assignment. Uh, exact same free body diagram, so I'm not going to draw it again. And we're going to say that F net equals FG parallel minus FT plus FT. I paused for a moment because I thought one of these didn't work that we solved this out. Obviously, this one did work because the numbers there support that it works. I might be thinking of my old assignment, FG2. Uh, total mass, ah, this might be it because five isn't very much in order to get this moving. Eight times A equals five times 10 is 50 times sine of 20 degrees. That doesn't look promising, minus 30. Sine of 20 times 50 is probably less than 30. But I, yeah, I was just going to say, I don't think I have answer slides to this. Uh, this right here, I don't know, get out your calculator because now I'm forced to do it. So 50 times sine of 20 comes out to be 17. 17 minus 30 equals 8a. Right there, that tells us that with a negative value, negative 13, it's not moving. I mean, we could make an assumption that maybe it's going the opposite direction. Uh, could we do that? Yes, because I think the problem I'm thinking of what I just described is actually once we get the friction. So right here, this tells me that um, I don't like the way I have my uh, F net equation. I don't think I need to change any of them, though, because there's no extra forces in here like friction that would have to be flipped over. And you don't even know what I'm talking about yet because we haven't covered it. Right now, this just tells me that the acceleration is negative, means that the three kilogram mass is actually winning the tug of war on the rope because this mass on the incline doesn't get to contribute enough to force to try to move down the incline, we actually end up with it moving this direction instead. Interesting. So then when I go to write my uh, F net for the finding the tension, it will say FG2 minus FT, so I can make this a positive number. What is it? Well, it's 13 over eight. So I'm gonna say three kilograms times positive 13 over eight equals 30 minus FT. And then you'll be subtracting this, which will give you an FT that's smaller than 30, which would make sense because if this is accelerating this way, this number here was bigger than this number here, okay? And this number here was bigger than this little component of gravity, the FG parallel there, all right? You don't have that happen on your test, so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it. I'm gonna keep moving on. For your review, 46 to 52, um, more practice of the same. Uh, in the Zoom, I will talk about exactly what's there. I should be doing that as we go anyway on, on from day to day. Um, for this one, since they tell me the acceleration of the system, when I go to make my F net equation, maybe I can start by putting in these things here, FG20 and it's FN, I'll call it FN2, and FG10 and it's FN, FN1. And it doesn't matter, those don't get to go into the F net equation. What goes in the F net equation is this mass is pulled forward. I'm going to call it FT2 or FT left since they talked about the rope on the right. And then this one here, same force, equal and opposite. And then this one here, which we can bet based on what we've seen before, is equal to whatever this is. This is equal to FT1. 
but we don't even need to worry about that. I'm not even going to do it. That's why actually I started with the 20 kilogram mass is because um, I'm going to make an F net equation based on it first. Since I know it's acceleration, that will give me what FTT's value is. Oh, let's do it underneath it. F net equals FT2, 20 kilograms times 0.5 meters per second squared is the value of FT2. So half of 20 tells me that FT2 equals 10. Then when I do an F net equation for this side, I should have enough information to solve for F net FT1. F net equals FT1 minus FT2, total mass of 10 times its acceleration of 0.5 equals FT1 minus the 10. 5 plus 10 should be 15. I feel like when I just made these slides, I had 25 written there. Let's see in which, oh, then I wrote down 25 anyway. Should be 15, shouldn't it? No, I don't like, uh, looks to me like I did this based on the entire thing. This, no, this is wrong. Those of you who looked at this online, this is wrong because if you're going to put FT2 in here and you're going to use a total mass, that would have implied that I looked at the entire problem here. I could have started with that, got FT1, but that still would have been no minus FT2 because it would have been minus FT2 plus FT2. So this is wrong. If I circle it like this, that's how it looks. Let's do the big one. If you circle the entire problem like so, uh, let's just go to right here, then that becomes F net equals FT1 minus FT2 plus FT2. So then 30 times 0.5 equals FT1. And that's where we get 15. So uh, that was a little bit of a typo mistake, mistake on my part, not a typo. I believe I made that mistake not paying attention. I believe that I did this thinking what I was thinking the first time, but then wrote down F net is total mass based on looking at the picture without drawing in my free body diagram. 47 didn't make it on the chapter test. We went over this with the lab, uh, so therefore I'm going to just keep moving and, and skip over that one there for number 47. And if you want to go over it because you did work on it and you'd like to see if you did it right, we can do it in the Zoom. Question number 48, um, I said that I was going to give you quizzes from, a, from um, AP Classroom, and I still may be doing that. So we need to be ready that we could do this from AP Classroom. Um, but it does show up on the chapter test that when you had to solve for like an F net, you got the acceleration, but then you took that acceleration and had to solve for one of the motion variables. So this is just backward of that. We use the motion variables to solve for A. I didn't even do that. I actually just took the uh, acceleration uh, definition and plugged that into the equation to solve for what the net force is. So just keep in mind that on your chapter test, it's backward of this. You'd be finding an acceleration from like a free body diagram from an F net equation. And then if I give you some motion variables that you could then solve for the acceleration, I'll point that out if we get to one here coming up. Um, this is kind of that idea. So we have our, our mass that's on an incline rolling down. We want to know at what speed will it hit the, the garage door 20 meters down the, the uh, driveway. So our F net equation says mass times acceleration equals mg times sine theta, which means that the mass of the car doesn't matter. Tell that to the garage door. Now that's a different thing. Once we hit the garage door, then there's, there's other things going on that we'd have to talk about in terms of energy, and then the mass is going to matter. So uh, we're just talking about at what speed does it hit it. Whether it's a tennis ball or a car, it's going to hit it at the same speed. 10 times sine of 20 will give us our acceleration which equals uh whoop, ah, crap i think it said 3.4 but i screwed up yeah 3.4 okay so now that we know the acceleration then we have to consider the motion variables that we know we know the distance that it traveled we know that it started out at a stop and we want to know how fast is it going when it hits the garage door we're using the motion equation VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AS. I can pretty much guarantee you're going to be doing that on your test. So be prepared that you have to take the acceleration and figure out a final speed. 
So VF equals the square root of zero squared plus two times 3.4 times 20 and solve that out. Question number 50, a uh, couple motion. You have problems like this on your test. Uh, this time it looks like we're gonna be moving counterclockwise to spin our pulley. Finally, we've done that. So we have our forces, FT, equal and opposite, FT, FG 13, and FG 18. And then we make an FNet equation based on all of that. Remember, this is a review. You're supposed to be pausing. I don't need to write all this down. It'll be on the next slide, I hope. All right, you wrote it down. You did it. Um, solve for the acceleration. Once you have the acceleration, solve for the tension. It looks to me like what I did to solve for the tension is I singled out this side since it was the side that was winning. Okay, solve for that tension. I'll go over that in more detail in the Zoom if you want me to. Uh, question number 51, same thing, another one of these. It doesn't feel right to say that a 10 kilogram mass will allow us to move. That's because our, we're still stuck in the world of, of friction that we know that this doesn't work. But if this is a perfectly frictionless surface, we're just not gonna have much acceleration. But our two kilogram mass, FG2, our one kilogram mass, FG1, and then tension forces. This time, since we're gonna be moving to the left, FT1, and then pulling forward, FT1, and then pulling upward, FT2, and trying to prevent the movement, FT2. Okay, so just the same thing in reverse, and that's probably not on the next slide, so it's good that we did write down the, um, the free body diagram, because every single question on the test says draw the free body diagram, FN. I want to see it look just like that. So if it doesn't look like that, I'm going to take all points. So if you have examples of this, make sure you look at them and then make the, the, the vectors to scale. Okay. When we make an FNet equation, because you're pausing, doing it. All right, now you're back. Oh, no answers. Never mind. We have to do it. FNet. Pretty F, huh? FNet equals FG2 minus tension plus tension. Ah, ah, no, no. Minus tension plus tension minus FG1. No excuse for getting these wrong. You have too many examples in your notes. Thank your lucky stars that you're able to take this at home. There's good and bad to everything. One of the good things is that you guys get to use your notes on your test. You would not be able to do that in class. A equals 10 divided by 13, whatever that is. I don't care other than to find the tension. And to find the tension, I'm going to single out these two sections. And once again, I'm going to say the same thing. If you'd like me to go into more detail on this, meet me in Zoom, and I'll explain it better there. Make your two FNet equations. Tell me that I didn't go over it closely, because I won't remember what I did and didn't. And 52, I think this is the last one. Uh, one more of these. We had a couple that we practiced earlier, and I need more information than just M1 and M2. Or do I? Could I make an expression based on this, and you could take care of the rest of it? So we would make an FNet equation that says, how about I start by beam Zen and going with F, G, 1, and break it up into its two components, F, G, parallel, and F, G, perpendicular. There's a possibility that on the AP test, they won't allow you to do that in the picture. Ah, that in your picture, you have to show it. I don't know what just happened here. But you have to show it just with the physical forces that exist. And so the parallel and perpendicular, those are components. They don't get to be there. But on my chapter test, I'm telling you, you can put them and I'm not, I'm not gonna be offended. I will not take off points. Okay, so there's all my forces. So then my F net equation says FG parallel minus the tension force plus the tension force minus FG2. Total mass would be M1 plus M2 times A equals M1 times G times sine of theta minus M2 times G. It's almost like that's just now become a generic formula where you just put in the numbers. I hate to tell you that, and that you just go through like a robot and do this on your test, but I can't stop you. Then if you have to find the tension force, I still like using the right-hand side for finding that tension. So I'm gonna say that F net equals FT minus FG2, or in other words, mass two times the A that we got from part A F2 minus mass two times gravity. 
And so now we have a series of two equations, really, that would be almost like what a robot would use and could solve for these kinds of problems, no matter what masses I give you. And I'm giving you these. All right. Sorry for hurrying, but I didn't really want to spend a lot of time with this. I'd rather just go and Zoom with this. There's no point in me telling you two times. All right. See you in the Zoom.